I think even a casual visitor to the Harvard Law School Library sees that it's a work that has been in progress now for two centuries. We have material a thousand years old in our collection, and we have things that were just published last week. You know, so we're really spanning the magnitude of the intellectual history, not just of the law, but of the world. This is a place that just resonates with that. The layers and layers of artifacts, of organization, of people who can help make meaning. We have over two million things in our collection. Each one of them is a treasure to somebody. So this is Manuscript 12, and this is a collection of Magna Carta and English statutes from around 1325. It has gorgeous illuminations with the illuminated E for King Edward. And one of the things I love about this volume is there's a lot of marginalia from early owners. You can really see how an owner engaged with it in such, such intimate detail. And when you see this manuscript physically, um, it, it really just brings the history to life. The majority of them are about English law, books of English statutes, or are registers of writs, that is to say, all the different ways that you could bring a lawsuit in medieval England. Some of them were designed to be treasures, really. They were created as works of art, and others were more working copies and much more humble. So, you know, for a 14th century lawyer, you know, they didn't have Westlaw, they didn't have Lexis, they had their little pocketbook, <laughs> um, their little, you know, register of writs or their collection of statutes that they would refer to. Um, and I think we could learn a lot about the early legal profession from studying their books. The early manuscript collection from Harvard Law School uh, has had fairly typical condition problems for early manuscripts. Say for this particular manuscript, it's written in iron gall ink on paper, and the iron gall ink is causing corrosion. So by looking through the paper with a light behind, I'm looking for areas of loss and cracking in the ink. And when I find them, I do repair using a non-water-based pre-coated tissue one of our uh, primary goals within the conservation lab is to provide for long-term uh, storage and provide for safe handling of the manuscripts. We're often, in terms of imaging, which has been a, a large part of the project for the early manuscripts in the law school, trying to make sure that things can be handled safely at the cameras. For some of the manuscripts that have original historic bindings, we are very careful to leave those bindings intact even if it means we can't get as good of an opening or good of an angle for filming, it's more important in those instances to be sure that the original artifact is preserved and kept safe. So this is manuscript 28. You can see there's been rodent damage to the vellum, um, which is evidently tasty. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, the, much of the text actually still remains. One of the most immediately noticeable things is that it's missing its leather cover or vellum cover. It's right down to the original oak boards. It's like having history a piece of it right there, right there. And I love to be able to share that, whether they're students or they're visitors. 
It's so nice to give uh, students the opportunity to see these materials close up. For them, I think it's a really transformative moment, getting a sense of the actual material culture of the materials that they've been reading about. These manuscripts are such a treasure because they are unique, and it's part of what makes the Harvard Law School educational experience unique. <laughs>